Well, hi, I'm John Hart. Welcome back to Mr. America Hart. Today, I'm addressing the question, does high-intensity training equal super slow? Whoa, what are those things? I'm going to have to tell you in a moment. And a little bonus material for you also. Does high-intensity training hit? Does it also equal full-body routines? I'll get to that one later on. So look, hit high-intensity training is generally defined as training wherein you're using a high intensity of effort, momentarily muscular contractions, taking it to the point where you cannot get another full, complete repetition at least within a given set of an exercise. And that's what we call concentric failure, where the muscle fails to do a full repetition at that point in time. Okay, that's the very least uh, of which in high intensity training. There's other levels you could go to more intense than that, but that's not the subject matter today. Just high intensity training for the moment. High intensity training also involves training less often because it's of a more extreme nature. Giving more effort requires that you do it less often. And it also requires doing less of it within a workout. So that's the other thing. So what do we see around the gyms most times? We see standard five, six days a week. People train at most gyms around most places around the world, actually, five, six days a week training, and they do three to five exercises of three to five uh, sets each, and they train each body part generally twice a week. So it's a lot of training, doing that higher volume type of training. And they generally do not train to the point of failure or where they cannot complete more repetitions. They stop a rep or two shy, and they save some in the tank to do more sets. So that's another way of training. But when it comes to HIT, high intensity training, we're talking about, there's an assumption down there that I've seen in the comments section of most of my videos, anytime I do a video on HIT. And the assumption is, is that we're talking about doing super slow motion movements and also doing full body routines. And here is where that comes from. Generally speaking, uh, the original or originator of high intensity training, full body routines, I see it as Arthur Jones with Nautilus equipment back around the early 70s. He was doing full body routines on people three times a week, and those routines were done pretty intensely, and they were very short, and he, they were in and out of the gym in no time, flat, using those machines, Nautilus equipment. And it was great. They were full body routines, but then eventually, uh, one of his students, Mike Menser, brought out split routines. The standard split routines, one workout chest and back, one workout legs, one workout shoulders and arms, that type of a thing. And during those split routines, he became a professional bodybuilder, one of the best ones in the world in 1979, 1980, a top five bodybuilder in the world between those two years. So he popularized that type of training. And again, it was split routine training. Dorian Yates, six time Mr. Olympia. Split routine, high intensity training from 1992 through 1997, six time Mr. Olympia. Those guys did it that way. However, one of the former employees of Arthur Jones, his name was Dr. Ellington Darden, uh, formerly a great bodybuilder himself as an amateur, did very well with it and taught training full body, just like his mentor did, full body routines and high intensity. And he also liked to use super slow. So he wrote 30 books on that over the last 50 years. And so that gained a lot of popularity or recognition, let's say. So there's an assumption that training with high intensity means using full body and it means going in a slower motion fashion. Well, Ellington Darden got a lot of that also from Ken Hutchins. I know I'm running down a little history here, but you get the idea in a moment. Uh, Ken Hutchins created Super Slow. That's the actual name of a training protocol. And when it came out, he wrote a book in 1993. And when that book came out, it was heralded as you know going to grow more muscle tissue than training in a standard fashion. And it did do better when it comes to people who are recovering from injuries, as well as older populations. So when there are less forces involved with a slower motion movement, 10 seconds up, and then 10 seconds down, lifting and lowering the weights in 10 seconds each direction. A 20-second repetition 
Well, it requires lighter weights. That's the first thing. And the older populations did very well with that because it's less potential for injury. There you go. Does that mean that a four-second negative and a two-second positive, like Arthur Jones used and like Mike Menser used, and even Dorian Yates used the controlled fashion in some of his exercises. But does that mean that that four-second negative and a two-second positive is injurious or dangerous? Well, not quite. It just means that it's different. And so, again, Mike Menser trained me using a four-second negative a two-second positive, and then a static hold on exercises that required that. But doing exercises like that was relatively safe. You were using very, I was using very little momentum and using a high intensity within those workouts. So the answer here is no, high intensity training hit does not equal super slow. <laughs> super slow training all on its own is a derivative of high intensity training. Uh, how good is it? Debatable as far as growing muscle goes. That's what I'm talking about. As far as growing muscle goes, debatable at best. Okay, it can be argued. So, uh, funny story, little side note. I used to be a trainer at Gold's Gym in Venice uh, in the mecca of bodybuilding, and I was training clients there one day, and I saw up above uh, there was a little overhang up there by the bikes. Everybody, anybody, anybody who's been to Gold's Gym in Venice knows what I'm talking about. The bikes, stationary bikes are up you know, in, a, in a little area, a loft area up on top of the gym where you can overlook the gym and people watch. And so I saw a guy watching me training my clients, a little short guy. And he comes up to me after I was done. And he says to me, you're the best trainer in this place. And it was a nice compliment. And I asked him, well, what do you mean? And he says, well, I see the way that you teach them to train, lifting and lowering under control. Now, was I doing super slow? I was not. I was having them just use a controlled cadence. As it happens, that gentleman worked for Super Slow in Florida. There's an actual company called Super Slow, an outfit out of Florida. And uh, he said to me he'd like to work out with me. Uh, at, at first, I said, okay, that sounds fine. And then he started talking about burying me in the gym. <laughs> And here I am, I'm looking at this guy who didn't have a physique, had no muscle to speak of, and uh, he's staring up at me, telling me he's going to bury me in the gym. So I'm, you know, I laughed my way out of this conversation, realizing that this is some sort of a, uh, you know, I don't know, he's trying to prove something to me. And uh, not necessarily getting in a great workout, but he's trying to prove something to me. So I just, our conversation didn't go well after that. And I just bowed out of it gracefully. And I said, you can keep your super slow. I'll move on from that. I've already trained that way, but thank you. And so I didn't want to get too much into it. And I wasn't going to waste even one workout on it. And certainly not waste a workout on somebody who was, you know, talking about burying me <laughs> in such a way as he had. But in any event, uh, it was a little funny side story. Uh, the other thing, does high-intensity training equal full body routines. I answered that just now when I told you about Arthur Jones uh, doing full body. Mike Menser, not so much. K Casey Viator, as he moved on in his professional uh, uh, career after Arthur Jones, Arthur Jones trained him in the early 70s, he also went to split routines. Ray Menser, split routines. Uh, you know, Dorian Yates, split routines. And that doesn't count the myriad of people who have trained in high-intensity fashion using split routines. I'm one of them. I've hardly ever done a full-body routine. I can't stand it, actually. So, And I didn't see progress doing it so much better in any way, shape, or form. And I do. If any of you all know me, you know I give every technique a fair shot. I give it a decent amount of time. So check out some of my videos, and you'll see that I'm telling you the truth about how I uh, take techniques and I'll work them into the ground. And if they work, great. If they don't, I throw them out the window. And that was one of them I threw out the window. Super slow is not a part of my training. And that's it. So high intensity training does not equal super slow, does not equal full body routines. Can you do those things as a part of a high intensity training routine? Yes, you can. And that's it for today. Off to my left, before you leave, you're going to see a disc pop up right now. That is the 
subscribe button for my channel. Once you give that thing a tap, it, it'll just mm, light up the YouTube algorithm all kinds of ways. And then down below over there, you'll see a thumbs up button over there. Once you give that thing a tap, turn it blue before you leave. That'll let the YouTube algorithm know how much you're liking my videos. And I appreciate it very much from my heart to you, John Hart. I'll see you next time.